Good morning, Marines. Good morning. Hi, my name is Sergeant First Class Hall. I'm a career counselor with the Marine and Guard program. The Marine and Guard program is a brand new program to where Headquarters of the Marine Corps partnered with all 54 different states and territories to give you, separating Marines, one more opportunity to continue to serve. All right, before we get into the brief, I will let you know a little bit about myself, not to where you're like, hey, who's this guy in the Army uniform giving me a brief when I'm trying to get out of the Marine Corps, all right? First and foremost, I am a prior service Marine, along with everybody who is on the Marine and Guard program, okay? That is one of the requirements. All of our transition counselors and our career counselors are prior service Marines. Myself, I did four years active duty with 2-7 up in 29 Palms, okay? I did two combat deployments, one to Al-Assad, one for the Battle of Fallujah. I was on deck for a third deployment. I didn't have enough time to go on that deployment on my contract, so I got to stay back in the RBE, all right? While I was back in the RBE, when I went through, when I was transitioning out in 2007, up in 29 Palms, they had the Border Patrol, LAPD, and the VA come talk to us. That's how they said, you're prepared for civilian life. All right, so this week might be a little bit dry, might be a little bit boring, some of the material itself or its delivery might not be your cup of tea, but take it with a grain of salt because when you're out for nine, 10, 11 months, <clears throat> and maybe civilian life isn't going the way that you thought it is, would it, or that it was supposed to be, maybe you'll remember something from this course, okay? So that's just my input for you. So I went to Taps for Tamps back in the day, um, I decided to get out because I was excited for first of div. You're excited, okay? I was excited to get out. Whoever you have home waiting for you, you might be excited for that as well too. You got mom, dad, brother, sister, Jody, Johnny, whoever you got waiting for you, okay? And those relationships matter. But what I realized nine months after I got out was nothing's the same as when you serve to the left and to the right with somebody, all right? And those relationships mattered and I missed it. So I remembered there is a prior service recruiter down in the valley. I went and talked to him. I'm a tow gunner by trade. So I had an eight time multiplier for $46,000. Thought I was gonna get paid. The recruiter pretty much laughed at me and said, nope, there's no money for you, dog. You've been out for longer than six months. You're no longer a re-enlistment. You're a brand new accession. So then I looked at him and said, what's in it for me? Because you can go talk to a recruiter. It's all about you, right? No, it's not Marines. It's all about that quota, but it should be about you, okay? But he said, well, I'll let you keep your rank of corporal. You got to go back to 2-7. And by the way, they're going to Afghanistan. Nope, not doing it. So went back to bartending for a little bit. Two weeks later, I was a little bit salty. Still wanted to be a Marine. Went and talked to the reserve recruiter. Asked him the same thing. He said, well, I'll let you stay as a corporal. We're going to put you in an infantry unit here in California. And by the way, they're going to Afghanistan. Nope, not doing it. So then about two to three weeks later, me and my buddy were having a beer and we had a good idea because that's when good ideas always come to fruition, right? And he was like, hey man, if you still want to serve, why don't you join the National Guard? And I said, what's the National Guard? And he was like, I don't know. So I went home, nationalguard.com, and put on my information. 24 hours later, found myself in Indio, California, talking to a recruiter, tried to walk in his office and he said, don't even sit down. I'll give you 20 grand and let you pick your job. I was like, all right, cool. So because I was infantry by trade. I didn't want to continue to be infantry. I didn't want to be a person other than the grunt. So I met in the middle and I chose MP. Any MPs in the room? Nope, not even one. All right, cool. So did MP and then as luck would have it, 12 months later, where did I go Marines? No, <laughs> Afghanistan, okay. I ended up getting deployed with the California um, National Guard. I did a 15 month deployment to Afghanistan. I was a brigade PSD squad leader. Did some cool stuff over there, worked with some people to where when I came home, I was able to get hired by the State Department and work privately doing private contracting. Did that for three and a half years, spent five and a half years total overseas. I miss my family. I'm from Wisconsin. Anybody from Wisconsin? What part? Okay, I got you. All right, from Milwaukee. So I'm a little Southie, little city boy. But all right, so I miss my family because those relationships mattered. Went back to Wisconsin, got my foot in the door, did recruiting. Became an Army drill sergeant, so I did that for a little bit. Then I went back to recruiting, and then I got handpicked to do this job. All right, so Marines, that slide I don't put up here so you guys can sit here and say, oh my God, Sergeant First Class Hall is awesome. The guard just does all these great things. Yes, they do, and that's not the gloat, but the whole point of that is to give you a keyword that I'm going to use during this brief, and it's opportunity, okay? 
The whole point of that slide is to show you there's opportunity. If you were to ask me 13 and a half years ago, if I thought I could put my career on one slide and have it look like that, I would have told you absolutely not, okay? But I've been fortunate enough to be with the National Guard and they've given me those opportunities. So when I give this brief, I want you to envision having your own opportunities, okay? Before we start the brief, by the way, anybody just come off of a UDP or a MU? Okay, so you did not watch AFN recently because this commercial has been on it, but this once again is an audio video to help you just audibly and visually kind of connect with this brief. As a Marine, you've played a key role in protecting our nation's freedoms by bravely serving on the front lines against all threats. Designed for Marines transitioning out of active duty service, the Marine to Guard program opens up all the opportunities the Army National Guard has to offer. When you speak with one of the program's career counselors, you'll be speaking with a former active duty Marine that has already made the choice to continue their service in the Army National Guard. Even though it's a part-time service, you can get full-time opportunities. There's just so much about the National Guard that goes above and beyond that creates opportunities. Serving close to home, money for college, MOS transfer, these are just some of the benefits available to you. Your service doesn't have to come to an end. You have the opportunity to join your fellow Marines. I've been able to continue to serve my country and it's been a great experience. Learn more by reaching out to a Marine to Guard career counselor or visit nationalguard.com slash M2G. Okay, so good news for you Marines. You don't have to do that because we're already here for you, okay? So now we're actually gonna get into the informational brief here. Who thinks they know what the National Guard is and what we do and our purpose? What do you got Marine? Yeah, that is a very broad spectrum, vague, correct answer, okay? So for the rest of everybody in this room, that line might be a little bit blurry of what the National Guard is and what we do, so I'm gonna clear it up for you. National Guard is a department of the Army just like the Marine Corps is a department of the Navy, okay? Underneath the Army's umbrella, you have three components. You got active duty, reserves, and the National Guard. The difference between the first two and the latter is the first two are federal, okay? National Guard is state. Every state and territory to include Guam, Puerto Rico, DC, and the Virgin Islands has their own National Guard, okay? We are focused on domestic operations, okay? Our primary focus is natural disaster, civil unrest, and emergency relief. Some of the things I've done in my 13 and a half years in the National Guard here in California, sets on fire every year, correct? Wow. Yeah, takes all summer to put it out, even though we're located next to an ocean. Can't figure that one out either, okay? But I got activated for a summer to fight environmental fires, okay? On the flip side, Wisconsin, what happens in the winter? Snowstorms, Snow ice, blizzards. If you, anybody's old enough to remember about seven years ago, there's a big blizzard, took everything out from Iowa down to Chicago. My MP company was the state's QRF, the National Guard and the military has assets that civilian agencies don't have, okay? We got activated to take care of everything from Milwaukee to Chicago. So we we're pulling people off the side of the freeway escorting EMS services because they couldn't get to them. We even had combat medics that were doing house calls because 911 couldn't get to them, okay? So that's some of your emergency relief stuff. Uh, natural disasters, anybody from Florida? Jersey? Hurricane areas, okay? So you guys are tracking National Guards, probably helped you guys with that. And civil unrest. Marines, if you've turned on the news once in the past year, year and a half, you've seen National Guards have been pretty busy, yes? Okay, I did get activated once for the riots in Wisconsin, but once again, as we just seen, that's what the National Guard does, all right? So I would like to think, Marines, at least four years ago when you all went to MAPS and you raised your right hand and you wanted to swear in, you wanted to help people, save people, make a difference, yes? yes. Everybody else just wanted to kill bodies? <laughs> all right, well, maybe you got to do at least one of those two while you've been serving, Marines, but if you still have what I call that savior complex, that's what you get out of serving with the National Guard, because if you want to help people, save people, make a difference, why not go home and do it in your communities? Does that make sense? Okay, we are a reserve component, okay? So there's no difference in the obligation you're going to give us than any other reserve component. So Marine Corps reserves, Air Force reserves, Army reserves, anything. We are a reserve component. You're going to give us one week in a month, two weeks in the summer. It accounts for 39 days a year. That's it, okay? And the National Guard... We do have a little fun fact. I know we all were brainwashed back in boot camp to think that the Marine Corps is the oldest branch of the military. It's actually not. National Guard has been around over 136 years longer. The reason why is back in the day, 
We were the militias with the muskets. Now we've just evolved into a full-blown state's military. So now everybody in this room hopefully has a clearer picture of what the National Guard is, what we do, and what we're about. Because we know people have rumors and talk smack, yes? All right, very well. So hopefully that's a little bit clearer for you, okay? Benefits, okay? If this is something you decide to do or look into, what is it? How's it going to benefit you? Because Marines, it is about you, okay? That is one of the things. That's why it's important. Everybody on this program is a prior service Marine because we were where you are. We're not here to take anything away from you, okay? This brief, this process is about you, not us. So first and foremost, you are not required to attend Army basic combat training because the Army and the National Guard understands and respects the fact that you went to the most hardcore, dedicated boot camp on the face of the earth, yes? All right, so... We're not gonna patronize you and have you get knife handed by a knuckle dragger like me. We're just gonna transition you directly, find a unit, place you into it, okay? You do have the ability to maintain your rank and data rank. Key word on that line is ability, okay? The reason why is we can only put you in the slots, Marines, that are available right now, okay? So there's no E6s or E7s in the room. If they are, just in case you're promotable and for people watching this, Higher ranks do become a little bit more difficult to find because we have to have open E6 or E7 slots. So that's where that keyword comes in. You E4s and belows, you're considered what's called a 10 level slot. There's a 100% chance that I can get you a position, okay? So don't, you don't have to worry about taking a rank reduct to E3s. E5s, once again, it does get a little bit difficult for you. But once again, our main prerogative, first and foremost, Marines, is have you keep your rank and keep you happy because we all understand what it means to obtain the rank of even corporal so we're not here to take away that chevron because we understand you work very hard for it yes all right so ability to maintain your rank and data rank and then we do have 60 different marine corps mos's that directly convert over to the army side to keep it simple for you infantry converts to infantry artillery converts to artillery um, motor t converts to motor t and there are some mos's that do not convert over but we can get that for you is anybody intel Okay, no one's in the room for Intel. In case somebody is Intel, we do have a process to where we can get that MOS converted and awarded to you without having to go to Army training. Now, who in this room is a aviation MOS? Okay, a lot of 6,000 series. Unfortunately, aviation MOSs do not convert over. So what does that mean? You get to lap move or reclass into a different MOS. Bottom line, Marines, you can do whatever job you want on our side of the house as long as your ASVAB scores qualify you for it and it's open, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, cool. Uh, commission officers and warrant officers. Warrant officers, um, contrary to belief, you do not need to have civilian education to become a warrant officer on, on our side of the house. You just have to be preferably an NCO and have two to three years of relevant experience within that MOS field, okay? so. A lot of people from down here maybe want to look into the warrant to the flight options. We do have that. Or if you just want to be a cool chief, you can go for that as well, all right? Commission officers, you have to have at least 90 college credits or have a bachelor's degree to attend our OCS. We have three different OCS pipelines that you can go into. Who wants to continue going to school when they get out of the Marine Corps? Okay, Marines, I hope to see a little bit more hands. If you don't have a solid plan, because here's a reality check for you. If you think you're going to go out in society and put United States Marine Corps on your resume and think that separates you the rest from society, you need to take a drug test on Friday when you're done with TRS. Okay? Because the reality of it is, is society understands and respects the fact that you've served at least four years in the Marine Corps, but as a separated service member, you're a dime a dozen nowadays. Okay? Especially with the pandemic and everything we've gone through in society in this past year, you're a dime a dozen. Go get your school, because even having a bachelor's degree nowadays does not make you competitive, okay? With some of the education benefits, depending on what state you're going back to, some of you will have a master's degree paid for and free, okay? So if you go get at least 90 college credits or you obtain a bachelor's degree, cool, you can come over and be a future leader of soldiers on our side of the house. And full-time employment opportunities, I know the previous slide talked about how the National Guard is one week in a month, two weeks in the summer. Well, somebody has to run that organization the other 29 days a month, kind of like the Marine Corps INI staff, okay? We do have some full-time opportunities, just like this job is full-time. Depending on what state you're from, we got ADOS, counter-drug teams. There's a lot of cool opportunities, Marines, all right? 
There are three other benefits I'll talk about that's not on this slide. First and foremost, tattoos. Who's got tattoos? Who wants to get more but can't because of the MAR admin? <clears throat> okay, you can't see Marines, but I got trash all up and down my arms, okay? Here's the Army regulation that some Marines find as a benefit. Nothing below the wrist, onto the hands, nothing above the t-shirt line, out of the neck or face, okay? So, as long as you stay within those guidelines, that is a benefit. You can look like Adam Levine, just not Post Malone, okay? The second benefit, this is a direct accession program. How is that a benefit to you? Everything that is done inside of this uh, program can be done in our office. So it can be done virtually over the phone or via email. We can get your whole process done in about 90 minutes, start to finish. You don't have to go to MEPS. Who remembers MEPS? Who remembers that medical physical? Okay, we can facilitate a duck walk, but Marines, we think that that's a benefit, okay? And then lastly, we do have a session bonuses, depending if you qualify for it, up to $20,000 as well, all right? So Marines, that is a list of benefits that could be afforded to you if you decide to embark on this opportunity. Specialized schools, because we are part of the Army's big umbrella, you can go to some of the who of the motivated, adventurous, or career progressing schools, okay? Air Assault, Army, Army PME, flight school, food service, you wanna be Bobby Flay with a combat spatula, we got you Marines, all right? Whatever you wanna do. Pathfinder, Ranger School, Special Forces, we do have the 19th and 20th SF groups. There is a pipeline right now and a process to set you up to where you can go through SFAS selection while on active duty as a Marine. So then when you EAS, we can put you in a special warfare training detachment, and then you just follow on to the Q course, all right? And Sapper, Drill Sergeant School, so on and so forth. Marines, bottom line, what's the key word again? All right, there we go. Civilian education opportunities. Marines, once again, you getting out, you're gonna maintain your federal educational benefits. So that post 11 GI Bill that everybody likes, because you get the BAH, you're gonna get afforded to that. Depending on what state you're going to, you will receive additional state incentives. I'm gonna use Wisconsin as an example. If this Marine decides to transition back to Wisconsin National Guard, he's gonna get 100% tuition to any UW State School up to Madison's rate, because Madison is 100%, okay? So that means I can tell this Marine in front of this whole room, and then when this gets broadcasted later on, that this Marine can get 100% school paid for, up to a bachelor's degree, at least in Wisconsin, and then uses additional benefits. Who's from Texas? Who's going back to Texas? Okay, you familiar with the Hazelwood Act? Very similar down there. Who's gonna stay here in California? Okay, California, unfortunately, does not have 100% tuition like that, but what they will do is their state tuition will match federal tuition assistance, which right now it comes out to be $8,000 a year per year up to four years. So that's in addition to your post 11 GI Bill, the Reserve Montgomery GI Bill that you're gonna get, you get those STAs, and then you have yellow ribbon programs as well, Marines. So once again, go get your education. Networking abilities. Once again, I told you my story about how I networked and I was able to contract. You can do the same as well too. Uh, what's your MOS, Marine? Okay, so everybody in your shop is a helicopter mechanic every day, yes? Yeah. Okay, if you were to transition, what job would you want to do back in Wisconsin? Hypothetically. Same, same thing, helicopter mechanic out of Madison. Okay, cool. So that's what you're going to do one week in a month, two weeks in the summer, but when you show up for those two days in the month, that's not what everybody else is going to do the other 29 days a month. Somebody might work for a construction company. Somebody's spouse might work for a veteran-friendly Fortune 500 company. Somebody might own a company, but Marines, you're gonna create opportunities and network with people so you can let your military life create opportunities on your civilian life. Clearances, who's got a clearance? Who remembers that SF-86 doing all those questions? Okay, the good news for you is your clearance stays under the DOD. You do not have to redo the SF-86. Your secret's gonna convert to secret. However, if you wanna do a job on our side of the house that requires a TSI or I'm sorry, a TS or a SCI, you will just have to do the upgraded version of the background check. And then licenses and certifications. There are some Marine Corps and Army MOSs that directly convert over to give you civilian certifications. Motor T, you guys get your CDL. If you do bulk fuel, you get hazmat certs. Who's in aviation again here? Who would like to do aviation on the civilian side? Okay, 15 Tango, which is our Black Hawk repair, that going to that MOS school gets you your AMP certification on the civilian side. 
I don't know aviation like that, but apparently it's a big deal. Yeah, okay, so that's just one more example for you. All right, insurance opportunities. Sergeant Farmer will cover it a little bit more in detail with you, but it's TRICARE Reserve Select. It's the same level of health care for yourself and your family Marines that you are receiving right now on active duty for free. However, you have to start paying into it on the guard side. Who's married? Who's got kids? All right, cool. All right. So for those Marines, you guys care about yourself, you care about your spouse, you care about your family. You want to keep them healthy. You want to keep them safe. You're going to be able to receive the same level of care on the guard side. You just have to pay into it for a single service member for medical, dental, and vision. It comes out to about 70 some dollars a month for a family. Let's just round up and call it 300. All right. Why is that a benefit? Marines, you are not going to find insurance with that level of care for that cheap on the civilian side. All right. So some people look at it as let me serve two days a month to wear another uniform just to keep my family healthy and safety and safe. That's a benefit. Okay. Take care of yourself. Take care of your families. Now, what can I do for you? Marines, do not get it twisted. I'm not a recruiter, okay? We are all transition counselors. We are here to do a job and that is to serve you, okay? Our job is to adv advise and give you advice and be a liaison from McSess Miramar or whatever air base or ground base you are transitioning from to whatever state you're going back to, okay? Once again, we are located up in Camp Pendleton, but we do have offices on the East Coast and we do have somebody who just started an office in Hawaii. So virtually we can reach out and touch anybody that is a active duty serving Marine. Our job is to advise and give you advice, okay? If this is something you wanna do, once again, our direct accession process is gonna place you directly from the Marine Corps active duty into whatever state's National Guard you decide to transition to two days after your EAS, 95% of the time. For some people who have been in for over eight years, you will start one day after, but that is our process. That is what we are here to do. We are located on Camp Pendleton. So that is my phone number. That is my email Marines. Okay. We also do have nationalguard.com slash MTG. You can go on there. You can see that little video that we just showed you. We do have a YouTube channel. There's a lot of information out there Marines, but sometimes just making a phone call or sending an email is the best way to get that information. Okay. There are people, <clears throat> that check their emails 10 times a day just to see, hey, is anybody interested, okay? So that's what we can do for you, Marines. Summary. So that was about a 17 minute long brief. I know I kind of brushed through it, but hopefully it was informable. Marines, this process, this future continued service, if it's something you decide to do, it's gonna be different, okay? Still in the military, different rules, different regulations, different policies. To be totally honest with you, it took me about two and a half years to fully transition into the army way of life, okay? I will give you another bullet point, but to show you how small, but big of a National Guard is when I checked into that MP company, my platoon sergeant that I checked in with was a platoon sergeant that I had in 2-7. I was like, what are the odds of that, okay? But it's gonna be different, but you're still serving, okay? We want you to build on and maintain your benefits. Marines, once again, I can't stress the fact we are not here to take anything away from you. Everything that you've earned since you've been here in the Marine Corps, you will maintain, okay? You've already built a solid foundation for your house for your past four years of service. Now we're here to give you drywall and studs and help you continue to build that house, all right? You do have the opportunity and freedom to build your civilian career and your education at the same time, okay? If maybe you joined the Marine Corps and you were told or you thought you could pursue education while serving active duty and you weren't able to, well, now you can still serve in the military, have a civilian job, and get your ed education all at the same time and have it be paid for. We want you to bring your experience, knowledge, and motivation on our side of the house, Marines. I know it sounds tacky, but we want you to bring JJ did tie buckle to the seven army values. I know it's been a hot minute since some of you probably heard that acronym, but if you think about it, it makes sense, all right? Further development of leadership. Marines, I just pinned on E7, barely got out of the Marine Corps as an E4. I did have some administrative issues, okay? but. I am a living, breathing example that you can still make mistakes in life and progress in your career. Who feels that they've been stagnant or couldn't get promoted because of that new MAR admin that you can't pick up E5 in your first four years? Did that affect anybody in this room? Okay. If you're a little bit salty about that, <clears throat> most E4s coming out of the Marine Corps, four years as a corporal, you already, main, you already make time and grade, time and service requirements, so you are promotable to E5. 
okay? So if you feel a little bit stagnant on the promotional side, you still can further develop yourself into a leader and still get promoted. And then join former Marines currently serving in the Guard. Marines, the National Guard is 337,000 Guardsmen nationwide. There's currently over 100,000 prior service Marines. You guys are a little bit smarter down here in Miramar, but I gotta tell it to my nine palms guys, that's almost a third, okay? So you're not the first, you're not the last, but it just shows that there is that opportunity for you to continue to serve, all right? Hopefully you've taken a picture of the phone number or the email, but then also you can go to nationalguard.com slash MTG and find out relevant information or you can submit a direct email inquiry, all right? Marines, thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Have a great week. The Army National Guard's Marine to Guard program is designed to provide Marines with the opportunity to continue their service. The program's career counselors are all former active duty Marines and will tell you about all the benefits of the Army National Guard available to you. Even though it's a part-time service, you can get full-time opportunities. There's just so much about the National Guard that goes above and beyond that creates opportunities. Learn more by reaching out to a Marine to Guard career counselor or visit nationalguard.com slash M2G.